Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps, and welcome to episode two in our series, teaching you how to make the full iPhone game disappear in discs. In this episode, we're gonna jump into Xcode, and we're gonna fully set up the project. We're gonna prep the project, we're gonna import our assets, set up the custom font, get all of our scenes set up, and we will set up a scaling down technique to make the game universal. So, let's get started. Here in Xcode, we want to create a new Xcode project. This will be an iOS application, which will be a game, and hit next. Here, we can name our game. So this is called Disappearing Discs. Make sure the language is set to Swift. Game technology is SpriteKit. Devices is universal. So it will work on an iPhone and iPad. And hit next and save it somewhere nice and safe. So as I said, in this video, we will set up our project. So the first thing we will do here in this home area of Xcode is move down into our device orientation. And this here, it will lock the screen to a certain orientation. So we only want disappearing disks to be played in portrait. So we will unselect landscape left and landscape right. Because this is a universal game, what we also have to do is quickly change universal to iPad and unselect these three here. So we only have portrait because selecting the orientation whilst device is on universal only affects the iPhone version. So we want the iPad and iPhone version to be played only in portrait. So we have to do this in both. Make sure you set this back to universal. We want to tick requires full screen and we will change our deployment target to nine, which means anyone who's running a device with at least 9.0 can play this game. Now I'm pretty sure this game will work fine on iOS 8 and probably iOS 7 and lower, but I haven't actually had a chance to test it on iOS 8 or lower. So we will set this to iOS 9. So as long as the gamer's device is running at least iOS 9, then they can play our game. So now we have our device orientation and our iOS target set up, we now need our assets. If you haven't yet got the assets for disappearing disks, I explain how you can get those in part one of this series. So make sure you check that out for all of the information. And then all we're gonna do is simply find the assets, select them all and drag them into Xcode. Make sure this box here is ticked that says copy items if needed, because this will make a copy of the assets in the projects folder. So if you move your images or your graphics or your sound effects, it won't mess up your entire project. And hit finish. You will now see all the assets over here on the left. We have three sound effects, a background, four different discs, a blue one, a red one, a white one, and a yellow one, and a custom font. Now, most of these assets are now ready to be used in the game. So we can now use the images and the sound effects in the game. The custom font, however, is a little bit different because we have to set this up in the project so we can use it in our game. So to set this custom font up, there's two stages we have to work through. So let's jump back into the home area of Xcode, this here. We'll move into build phases and we will open up copy bundle resources. And here, all we have to do is make sure our custom font is on this list. So mine is here. Usually it will be here, but if it's not here, hit the plus symbol and simply add it to this list. Because if it's not on this list, the custom font will not work. Okay, so simply make sure it is on this list. That's stage one done, nice and quick, nice and easy. Stage two, over here on the left, move into the info.plist. And here we can find some of the settings for our game. So what we will do is right click, go add row, and we want to add the row fonts provided by application and open it up by using the arrow. And here, all we have to do is type the file name for the custom font, which is this over here. This PUSAB, hope I'm saying that right, PUSAB.TTF with a capital P. So, pusab.ttf. Make sure it's spelled right, because if it's not, it will not work. And make sure you have the same capital letters here as you do in the file name. 
And that is the custom font now set up and ready to be used in our project. You may have noticed that we only have one set of images. So we only have one background and one set of these discs. But we want this game to be universal. We want this game to work on every single screen size from the iPhone with the 3.5 inch screen all the way up to the iPad Pro and whatever other screen sizes they have in the future if you're watching this in a couple of years. So one way of dealing with this game working on every single screen size is to have a different set of images for each screen size. So you'd have a set of images for, you know, for the smaller iPhone screens, for the iPad mini, for the iPad and for the iPad Pro. But doing that can be a massive, massive pain because it can complicate your code and you either have to make all of these images or get someone to make them all for you. And if you're starting out and you're on a really strict budget, that's not really that doable. So we're gonna use a technique that quite a lot of simple games use, where we're gonna make the game fit on one set size and it will then scale to work on all screen sizes. So this would be quite a big fixed size, so it would scale down so there'd be no pixelation. Okay, so that way we can make one game using one set of images and it will work on every screen size. To set this up, we will move into our game view controller and we want to look at this line here. Now at the moment, this line here is saying load up the game scene. So basically, when the game first loads up, take us straight into the game scene, which is this file just here. But we're gonna change this so we can work with our set size, so we can use this scaling technique. So for now, we will get rid of this line entirely and one closing curly bracket, down here because we got rid of an open curly bracket. And instead here, we will say let scene and we will set this up to take us straight into the game scene for now. And now we can put in our set size. So we're gonna say size colon and for a size, we will use a CG size. So we have this template for the width and the height and our set size will have a width of 1536 and a height of 2048 with an extra closing bracket to close that one off there. And this is the resolution of the iPad mini retina. And using this size, we can scale to work on any screen size. So now we've set up our game to be universal with one set of images using a simple scaling technique. So now we can make our game and it will work on any screen size. Very nice. So because of this line here, as soon as our game loads up, so as soon as we push that app icon, we will be taken into the game scene, which is this here. So this code here is going to run. So all of this code at the moment in the game scene is a Hello World app made by Apple, which we don't want at all. So highlight all of this, hit delete, and we have a nice blank game scene ready for us to use. So this is our game scene all set up and ready to go but Disappearing Discs actually has three different scenes. As you will see in later parts in this series, we will have a main menu scene and a game over scene, which will show you a final score when you have lost the game. So we might as well set these scenes up now and then our entire project is ready to go. So we will go to File, New, File, and for a new scene, we want to go to iOS Source, Swift File, hit Next, we will call this main menu scene and hit create. And you will now see our main menu scene file over here on the left. But just because we've made this file doesn't mean it's yet a scene. It's just a blank file. So in the main menu scene, we will start by importing SpriteKit. So we can use all of the awesome stuff that SpriteKit has to offer. And to make it into a scene, we will say class. We will name it main menu scene. This is an SK scene. Open curly bracket, drop some lines, and it should put in your closing curly bracket for you. So this is our main menu scene now set up. We just need one more. So let's repeat the entire process with file, new, file, iOS source, Swift file, next. We will call this one game over scene. Hit create. Move into the game over scene. Again, we will import sprite kit and set this up as a scene by saying class game over scene. It's an SK scene with our curly brackets. So we now have all three of our scenes set up 
And with that, our project is now all ready to go. We set up our device orientation, the iOS targets, we set up our assets, our font, we made our game universal using the scaling technique, and we now have all of our scenes set up. And there we go, our project is now all set up and ready for next time where we can start making the game. So as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, which I really hope you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.